Hi, I'm Sarah L, and welcome to the fourth episode of Boating New Zealand. It's been an action-packed summer, so let's have a look at what's been going on with the latest in news and reviews. First up, our powerboat expert John Eichelsheim heads out for a fish on the new hard-topped offshore 650. So this boat is, is quite special in, in a lot of ways. Um, a very, very heavy, heavily built hull. Yes. What sort of a, a bottom have you got on this? We've got an 8mm bottom, we've got an 8mm trans, uh, we've got a 5mm floor, a 5mm gas tank which holds 200 litres, and 4mm sides, 4mm deck. Right. And uh, so basically from the trying down, there's a huge amount of weight which keeps it so stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I guess that contributes to the, to the handling, which is pretty... pretty Absolutely, good, isn't it? yeah. So th th this is an offshore boat, and, and the brand name is Offshore as yes. well. Um, is that what appealed to you? It is. We do a lot of offshore fishing, and we just like to get to places kind of relatively quickly, mm -hmm. safely, and it does its job really well. Now this boat is, is rigged out for fishing quite obviously, I mean yes. we've, got a, we've got a fishing transom, we've got, uh, we've got things like um, uh, yeah, tuna tubes, we've got, we've got rod holders for Africa, um, you know it is all really well set up, lots of storage as well. Yes. So if you were to do a, a fishing day, a bit like we're going to do today, what, yes. what sort of thing would you, you know, how would your day kind of pan out? Well we'd probably start off in the harbour, we'd get some live bait, then we'd probably shoot off to the islands. Uh, sometimes we'll go about 50 k's out, right. uh, out to the Makahini Hours, right. and um, spend the day out there, going around the islands, and a stop, have a feed, have a little bit of a drink, um, good fish, yep. and then shoot back in the evening. Right, yeah. right. So, so it's, a, it's a lifestyle kind of a, a boat for you guys. You know, it is, really. yeah. Now I notice you've got quite a bit of space in the, in the forward cabin there, quite long berths. So would you consider spending overnight sort of stays on this boat? Oh absolutely, yes. We'd stay overnight. Very comfortable. 1.995 uh, metres long. Okay. And so you fit two guys in there, no, no worries. And you carry a bit of fresh water as well? We've got 30 litres of fresh water, yes. So very fishing oriented uh, transom area here, nice sort of bait board here, it's, it's raised up so nice and easy to fill it, Pin your rod holes across the back, I do like the way that this opens all the way up so you've got a really big area if you wanted to say you know, deal with a kingfish or something on board you could do that quite easily, you've got a sink here, you've got a drawer underneath, there's plenty of them, it's not quite, not going to rattle around, it's nice and uh, it's well, well in there. Underneath in the transom wall we've got a couple of uh, heavy duty batteries, two of them, 900 uh, CCA, yep, really uh, heavy duty batteries, so you're not going to run out of oomph with this boat. It's got a big 16 inch Simrad uh, NSS EVO 3 sounder, so you know you can run that the whole day and not have to worry about it. Power, Mercury, uh, Pro XS, 200 horsepower, V8, sounds fantastic. More from John later. Now we'll have a look at the ultimate in do-it-yourself projects, the Kitset Stitchbird dinghy. I'm Charlie North, I'm from Stitchbird Boat Company and we've designed a beautiful little boat that you can make at home. My whole motivation was to make the whole process of building a boat nice and simple and accessible to people who might not otherwise build a boat. I sat down and um, got to the drawing board and came up with these dinghies. I really wanted to keep this boat simple. I wanted to make sure that you didn't need tools, um, you didn't need experience, you didn't need to be particularly hands-on. All you needed um, was a bit of a can-do attitude. They're computer cut with a computer controlled router everything fits together precisely. There's no need to fine tune anything or get your chisel out. Uh, it all just slots together. So that really saves a lot of time. The whole idea of these boats is that they're more of an experience than anything. The build process uses cable ties to hold the boat together while the glue sets. Once the glue set, the cable ties can be removed and the holes that they leave can be filled in. You don't need to use any clamps or screws or any other sort of fasteners. The resin that we supply is a West System product. It's called 610. The epoxy can be applied with the aid of a corking gun. Using the corking gun means that you can accurately shoot the glue exactly where you need it. As the two parts mix, 
when they go through the nozzle, they begin to react and uh, over the course of 24 hours, the glue fully cures. I didn't think it would be that easy. So once the glue's set, the next step is to remove all the cable ties and sand down any lumps of resin. Once the boat's sanded down, you can fill in the little holes by putting a bit of masking tape on one side and squirting a bit of glue in from the other side. Once they're set, you can sand everything back flush. Sanding's a fairly easy process as long as you pay attention when you're gluing. The glue's really hard. It's much harder than the plywood. Once that's all done, a bead of glue can be laid in along all the joints to cove the joints out a bit and to make the boat watertight. More sanding after that and then we'd move into painting. So we worked closely with, with Altex to come up with a, a kit of paint which includes an epoxy sealer and a varnish for the interior, a sealer, primer and top coat for the exterior. The paint kit really takes the hassle out of the painting process because it's all there, the quantities are all correct and everything's ready to go. Yeah, I had a lot of fun and I think this is a great project for family. So when I was younger, I built a boat with my dad and it was an awesome process. We had a lot of fun doing it. And ever since then, I've wanted to come up with something that could give that same experience to families. In my case, dad had a huge shed full of tools and gear, a wealth of knowledge and experience. That made it really easy for us to take on the project of building a boat. But I know that's not the case for everyone. You get everything you need. Hardware like this towing pintle and the uh, Rollock ferrules come with the boat. This particular boat can be rowed along with a pair of oars so the rower can sit in the front seat here. The transom's reinforced at the back here so you can put a small outboard on it. And we've got a couple of fishing rod holders in the back too that you can drop a fishing rod into. The keel's quite, quite a deep keel at the back here so it, it rows surprisingly straight for such a small boat. The sides of the boat are four mil thick, the bottom's six mil. So it ends up being quite light. All the plywood's marine grade plywood, BS 1088 spec. So it's going to last well, especially if it's painted with the um, marine paint kit that we supply. It's got a hardwood keel through the middle here, so that's nice and durable and strong. That's the backbone of the boat. This dinghy will take a two and a half horse outboard quite nicely. Yeah, I didn't really think I could build a boat, but this one was really easy to make and it's really nice. If you want to know more, you can jump online and check them out at stitchbird.nz. This has been Charlie North from Stitchbird. Thanks heaps for watching. What I love about my Yamaha is just that continued reliability. I turn the key and it just goes. I spend hundreds of hours at sea and it just gets me out there, gets the job done and gets me home safely every single time. Welcome back to Boating New Zealand. There aren't that many New Zealand designed racer cruisers being built here anymore. So the launch of the Elliott 1350 Speedwell was real cause for celebration. I was lucky enough to go for a sail on her out of the Whangarei Heads. Hi, I'm Sarah L from Boating New Zealand and I'm very excited to be here today to show you the new Elliott 1350 Tourer. Now you might be familiar with this design, they've been building them since around 2008, but this is the first new one to go in the water for quite a few years. The boat is usually based up in Marsden Cove in Northland, but it's down in Auckland today preparing to do the cruising division of the Coastal Classic. However, we had our test sail up out of the Whangarei Heads, which when you see the footage you'll agree is absolutely spectacular. But let's go aboard Speedwell now and have a talk to her owner, Bob Glenn, about how the design came into being. So obviously Bob, you have a, a racing background. What were you looking for when it came to getting a cruising boat? I oh, wanted something that uh you know, we could cruise in comfort, um, but also not give away too much performance. Um, and that's why the, the Elliott Tourer sort of ticked a lot of the boxes right from the start. Albeit, you know, I did a look around the market to see what else was available, but kept coming back to the Tourer. Right, and, and so yeah. you'd seen existing boats. Yeah. How did it come about that you ended up building a whole new one? 
anyone who wants to buy a tourer finds it very hard because all the current owners don't want to sell. Yeah. Um, so it was a matter of I wanted one at the time, and this is two years ago we, when we signed up to get this built. Um, there was nothing available for sale, um, so it was a matter of do we just bite the bullet and, and do a new build? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's what we just we chose to do. And uh, one of the advantages of that is you can get the boat you want rather than the boat that someone else wanted. Right. Uh, and also you enjoyed being involved in the build process. Can you tell me a bit about that? Uh, yeah. Well, as I say I've, um, I've had boats before where I've been involved in the build process, both right back from Pied Piper when I was sort of 20 um, and then four or five years later doing Young 88 as well, um, you know, buying a hull and taking it home and finishing it off. With a new build I, I wanted to be involved again and um, I saw this as a bit of a, uh, a retirement project and I wanted to get involved and, and be involved right through the process. So we, we certainly wanted to uh, uh, use the local industry where we could and um, and that was always a factor in any of the decisions we, we, we made. What are your plans for using the boat now? You're based at Marsden Cove and, and where are you going to cruise to from there? Um, well this summer will just be already a shakedown so we'll just be up the north coast um, and then next summer our plan is ready to go south so uh, Mulberry Sounds and hopefully down to Fiordland so it could turn out to be a <laughs> A total circumnavigation next summer. Can you tell me what the boat's name is and why that's important or significant? Okay, um, the, boat the boat's name is Speedwell and there's some family history to that. My grandfather, uh, Joe Patrick, was a prominent yachty back in the, well really from the 20s through to the mid 40s when he passed away. Um, he won the Sanders Cup for Auckland, competed in it for several times as the Auckland representative. In his later life he had a, a couple of keel boats. Um, the first one was a C-Class called Speedwell and the, the second keeler he owned was um, Rainbow, the classic um, A-Class A7. And um, my brother, owns, he's a part owner of, um, of Rainbow so I thought it'd be nice to call uh, this boat after my grandfather's other boat. So uh, that's where the name came from. So there are a few neat features here on the boarding platform. There's this outboard bracket so you can take the outboard off the tender and stow it safely here. The tender folds up on these snap davits at the base and there's also an outdoor shower. So stepping aboard and having a look at the layout here, the boat's really well set up for short-handed sailing so if you're a couple offshore cruising, all the lines and sheets come right back here to these winches. This one is powered. We've got these two big racing style helms here which allow us plenty of good visibility forward. Another nice touch aesthetically here is the cork on the cockpit floor and on the combings along with these squabs that gives it a bit more of a cruising touch. Another great feature if you're here at the helm is the fact that the navigation screen is right here but it can also be pivoted and turned so it's easily visible from the other helm. So the cockpit floor is quite elevated which means there's lots of volume in the hull for storage. There's an absolutely huge locker in here for sails or other equipment. To keep on deck systems simple the main sheet runs up into the boom and then internally back to the winch by the helm. There's also a pair of flexible solar panels up here to keep the battery banks powered. This boat is set up with a furling number one. It also has this inner forestay for running a stay sail when cruising long term. Currently the sail wardrobe also includes a Code Zero and this beautiful red Jenica. There's heaps of room up here in the bow locker for sail storage as well, with a separate anchor locker forward. So the interior layout of the 1350s is all a bit different. In this boat, Bob's decided to go for a double cabin here to starboard and there's a head on this side. The galley takes up all of this port side and as you can see from here you've got great visibility all round as well as back out into the cockpit. All the interior furnishes have been chosen by Bob's wife Kerry who has a background in textiles and quilting and you can see some lovely touches of that throughout the boat. Because of the beaminess of this saloon area there's plenty of depth in the bench and room for storage in these, both these drawers and cupboards above. 
Bob was keen to make the most of the latest technology in this boat, so he's installed a C-Zone system instead of a traditional switchboard. The boat's electronics can all be controlled from here. Coming forward, it's down a few steps. We have a day berth on this side. Apparently it's a really great spot to sit when you're in the tropics with the hatch open above you. Head and shower here, which is semi ensuite with the owner's cabin in the bow. For food storage, there's not only this underbench fridge, there's also this freezer which has been neatly tucked in under the berth. The boat feels incredibly well balanced. It's very light on the helm going upwind, sits in the groove beautifully and tacks like a race boat. We sit nicely on around 7 knots at about 35 degrees apparent and you wouldn't get that from many cruising boats. It's fantastic to see these locally built sails by Calibre. It's a dimension polyant light skin carbon scrim with a skin of taffeta on the main. Popping up the brand new Jenica and bearing away, Speedwell accelerates smoothly and remains a pleasure to drive. I'm constantly tempted to heat it up and see how she goes, but this Jenica has been designed for flatter running. There's also a code zero in the sail wardrobe for tighter reaches. What a great day out. Now it's back to John for more on the offshore 650. So the helm position's uh, pretty comfortable, nice comfortable seat. Uh, it's adjustable in and out, it also has a bolster. I love the one piece screen here, the, the, the vision through the, through the forward screen is absolutely superb. We've got a single windscreen wiper on there to declare it should it get a bit of spray on there or you know on a, perhaps on a cold morning or something when you get a bit of, bit of condensation on the outside. Uh, but really the, the visibility is, is excellent. We've got sliding side windows and of course the hard top is open to the rear so you've got plenty of ventilation. So there's a fair bit of space in the uh, forward cabin. The berths are 1.95 metres long so you could stretch out, a tall man can stretch out in there quite happily. Um, underneath the infill there's a provision for a, a toilet if you wish and there's a whole lot of storage underneath the bunks as well as well as in the, uh, the side shelves and there are built-in drawers in this case they've labelled first aid and flares but you could label them anything you like I guess but that seems like a sensible thing to me lovely 16 inch uh, NSS Sevo 3 Simrad unit here um, does everything you, you want it to do you can also run the Mercury, um, Mercury instruments etc through the display it's set up to do that uh, we've got a Maxwell uh, winch and a Rockner anchor, Lenko trim tab, trim tab, Simrad, Simrad, VHF and a fusion stereo system for some sounds while you're enjoying your day out on the ocean. A feature of this boat is there are grab rails all over the place. We've got also got a nicely um, lined ceiling to the hard top but everywhere you reach you've got somewhere to hold on to which is really useful for an offshore type vessel like this is designed to be. So we've got lots of rod holders in this boat, not only for storing rods but also for fishing from and that's what these ones that go through the combings are designed for. They're all angled correctly for trolling so that if you want to use this boat for game fishing they're perfectly angled for that. Uh, you've also got the advantage of these three cup holders or sinker holders whatever you want to call them but they're quite handy, there's three each side. 
It's a nice little touch too. We've got a pair of, of drawers either side. You can use them for fishing tackle, you can use them for odds and ends, tools, whatever you like, but uh, quite handy. Tucked away and they're not going to fall out either. Rocket launcher, the angle is pretty good. The, the rods don't hang too far over the cockpit so they don't get in your way when you're fishing. Uh, you've got floodlights up there as well. In fact, it's well endowed with lights, this boat. Uh, there's a tow point up there also, should you want to tow someone or something. Um, we've also got underwater, underwater lights as well, uh, blue underwater lights, so she's pretty, uh, pretty lit up at, uh, at night time. So that's Offshore Boat 650 HT. We've done with the boat today exactly what it's designed to do. We've been out for a bit of a fish, we've dived for a few scallops, uh, enjoyed a really nice day out on the water. So we're going to head back, hose the boat down, and we've had a great day on the water. What I love about my Yamaha is just that continued reliability. I turn the key and it just goes. I spend hundreds of hours at sea and it just gets me out there, gets the job done and gets me home safely every single time. Welcome back to Boating New Zealand. Well, John certainly gets around. He also recently got a chance to go out on the new Sea Line C390 sedan sports cruiser. John Ackleshane for Boating New Zealand magazine. Today we're aboard the Sea Line 390C, the sedan version. It's a Bill Dixon design. Bill Dixon's known for his light, bright interiors, and this boat has got that in spades. So this is the Sea Line's uh, helm station. It's got the factory uh, electronics package. It's all Raymarine. Uh, that's the autopilot, obviously, uh, an MFD. Um, this particular owner has opted for the Volvo Pinto joystick control. Now this uh, vessel's got 380 horsepower D6 engines with stern drives and with this uh, joystick control you've got control that's almost as good as IPS, it's quite amazing. Uh, wonderful uh, power steering on this boat, you, you, you can steer it with one finger if you want to. Um, very responsive actually underway. Uh, it's a boat that's certainly good for uh, mid 30s, mid 30 knots and uh, very responsive to the helm. Uh, it rides quite well too, it carries the beam a long way forward, but uh, it certainly isn't, isn't hard riding in any sense and uh, we've had a little bit of slop to deal with today and it's, uh, it's handled it very nicely indeed. Dry as well, a couple of windscreen wipers on the very wide windscreen, in fact the, the vision in this boat is, is excellent. Really big windows right around and I do like the way we've got a nice little um, helm door here that lets us out onto the side deck. This uh, cabin is offset to port so on the starboard side, the side deck's that, just that bit wider than it is on the port side, makes it easier to get up onto the bow. For the helmless person, you can just get on out, go up forward or go aft, whichever way they need to go. Great when you come in to the dock and need to tie up. So talk about brightness, and, and it's really evident uh, here in the saloon. It's, it's such a light space and bright space, and that's partly that's because of the, the sunroofs. You've actually got uh, a, a double sunroof, if you like, and the, the front one is electrically operated that slides back to open it up to the air. Uh, which is a nice touch and something that I think you'd take advantage of a lot. I also love these really, really deep side windows. It's, it's great for looking out of. You've got panoramic views right around, so it makes this a really pleasant space to sit in. This L-shaped settee is, is, is quite comfortable. Uh, it's also quite clever because this 
forward part of it actually reverses so that you can uh, face forward when you're underway on a longer journey that might be the choice that you, you take rather than sitting with your back to the bow. Useful little chart locker here, we've also got a, a light there for that and it's also got a, a USB charger in it as well. So the saloon has a relatively simple layout but it's very practical and uh, this is epitomized by this galley here. It's um, plenty of working space when you're not actually cooking or when you're preparing food prior to, to actually heating anything. When it's time to get down to it we've got a fully functional galley space underneath here. Um, nice little folding faucet. You've got a double sink there which is nice on a boat like this. Double burner gas stove and a gas oven underneath. Refrigerator under the bench as well. So yeah a good combination of, of, of space and utility. So with this bifold door and this awning window you've got really really good flow from the saloon out into the cockpit. It's a very social space actually. Um, nice big cockpit table here. Um, this can lower or, or raise, it does that electrically, so um, easy to do this, there's no effort towards it. And this is another huge lounging area, um, either set up as it is now, which is a seating area, it also folds all the way out to make another great big sunbed. And of course, if you're after the sun, we've got this sliding sunroof again, electrically operated, it slides all the way back, opening the whole of the cockpit up to the sky. So for the sun worshippers this is definitely a boat you should consider. So Sea Lion's 390C, it's a light, bright, modern option, goes very well with the Volvo 380 horsepower engines, handles nicely, easy to manage, uh, I can see it's going to be a popular choice, especially if like this one it fits into a 12 meter berth. Well that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed those stories and if you want to read more, check out the latest edition of Boating New Zealand. Here's to more boating this summer.